Good day. I'm Ted Johnson, the Community Engagement Ranger at Timaquan Ecological and Historic Preserve. As a National Park Service site, Timaquan Preserve protects the natural ecology of over 46,000 acres of land and water and over 6,000 years of human history along the St. John's and Nassau Rivers in Northeast Florida. I'm here with Chanel and Felicia to share a creative project we worked on together to help tell the stories of those enslaved at Kingsley Plantation, one of the historic sites protected within the preserve. Hi, Ted. I'm so glad to be here. I'm Chanel Davis Bryant, the program manager with Groundwork Jacksonville, and I lead the Green Team Youth Corps. The goal of the Green Team is to empower youth to become active community stewards through environmental education and financial incentive. My privilege is to develop the next generation of environmental leaders and community stewards with our year-round program. Each summer, I lead a group of 22 youth, providing opportunities for them to engage in educational and inspirational outdoor activities while learning skills to become the next generation of environmentally engaged leaders of Jacksonville. Hi. And I'm Felicia. I'm the Program and Outreach Director for the Timaquan Parks Foundation. We're the official friends group for the National Park Service here in Jacksonville. Our mission is to preserve, promote, and enhance Jacksonville's natural areas through community engagement, education, and enjoyment. We've had a lot of fun this summer hosting the Green Team and the Timaquan Preserve, getting the kids outdoors for kayaking, we've been fishing, and just exploring the park's natural and cultural resources. Last summer, we all met to brainstorm how to most effectively engage the green team at Timaquan Preserve. And we developed a project that provided the youth with an opportunity to learn about the National Park Service, Kingsley Plantation, and to honor those who were enslaved at the site. All in support of the national commemoration of the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in British North America. Also acknowledging and even earlier African presence in Spanish claimed territories such as Florida. The commemoration is also meant to celebrate the resilience and contributions of African Americans. Special insights were provided by Kingsley descendant, Ms. Perry Francis. Most importantly, the youth were provided opportunities to learn and develop invaluable life skills, including critical thinking, active listening, and public speaking. Green team members also gained insight that will be helpful in competing for National Park Service jobs in the future. And the Jacksonville Public Library sponsored two special training sessions focusing on effective researching techniques. Originally, the team was going to present a public program on the grounds of Kingsley Plantation. Then the pandemic hit and we waited in anticipation of being able to hold the program in person. As the pandemic wore on, we knew with certainty we wouldn't be able to conduct an in-person event. We adapted and changed plans multiple times. We reevaluated the situation, revised our plan, and reemerged as stronger partners. We focused on providing the most valuable and rewarding experience for the green team. With the support of Timaquan Parks Foundation, we were able to create these very unique mini Black history lessons. We were more than happy to support this project and these young creative stewards. Uh, we had grant funding from 400 years of African American History Commission, the National Environmental Education Foundation, and a National Park Service Challenge Grant. We also think these podcasts are going to be valuable to those who want to know more about the National Park here in Jacksonville, and it's important for everyone to know about those enslaved at Kingsley Plantation. These radio shows were created through video conferencing software with each member calling in from their homes as we were all self-isolating for safety. We worked to create the most optimal sound recordings given the challenges. Our producer, Tim Driscoll, worked incredibly well with the technological challenges, and the green team members had a rich and enjoyable learning experience. They combined their learning with their creativity to contribute to sharing the stories of Kingsley Plantation. Despite the challenges and changes, we are excited to have partnered with the National Park Service and Timaquan Parks Foundation this year in commemoration of those who were enslaved and endured seemingly insurmountable conditions and exhibited unimaginable resilience in the U.S. over the past 400 years. It is my pleasure to introduce the Green Team's Morning Show. Good 
Good morning, it's your boy DJ Crew coming at you live. And you know that's a wonderful day to learn about that history. Today we have a few guests willing to share their first-hand experiences from the Kingsland Plantation in Jacksonville, Florida. We'll jump right into this 200-year-old historic site after a short word from our sponsors. Black excellence. What is black excellence? Fighting for one's rights, embodying great qualities, bettering ourselves? How about all these in our quality soul? Black excellence brings out and enhances your natural beauty, which makes you feel unique. It is an all-natural soap complete with ingredients from Africa, and it comes with a Black history fact. Call today to get a 25% discount and a premium scrub. Welcome back. It's your boy, DJ Truth, here with Abraham, who's been in the mix since 1786. Abraham is currently in the back of the studio being interviewed by Miss Ella. All right, all right. Thank you for that introduction, DJ Truth. Now, Abraham, big fan, big fan. I've always wanted to ask you something. How scared were you when you went up that mountain with your son Isaac? Oh, um, I think you're confusing me with the Abraham from the Bible. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm so sorry. We've, we've gotten coming in later today. I must have gotten the cards mixed up, same name and all. All right, Abraham. So, the Emancipation Proclamation, huh? <laughs> How crazy was that? Yeah, I'm not Abraham Lincoln either. Of course, of course. Oh, Abraham... Hanahan? Hanahan? It's so nice of you to join us this morning. It is lovely to meet you. Um, thanks. Now, the number one reason that our listeners wanted you on this show was because they admired your bravery and character. Could you tell us a little bit about some times you showed character? Sure. In 1810, the St. John's River Militia came to Laura Grove and tried to confiscate our guns, weapons, and supplies. And I was like, we need those. Of course you do, yeah. So I started protesting, and I got sentenced to a month of hard labor just for talking. Really? That is so unfair. Good thing that isn't the case anymore. Or is it? And then in 1812, when a Lucha natives raided Lower Grove, I was trying to defend the plantation, and I got shot. Dang, that must have hurt. It did. So, it's my understanding that your daughter and Zephaniah Kingsley have kids together. Yep. And you, you know how kids are made, right? Uh-huh. How are you so calm about this? Well, Zephaniah and I have a complicated relationship. He didn't look me on with me until I was 25, but when I was 18, he made me the general manager of the plantation, which meant I was mostly in charge when he was gone. Then I've got five grandchildren from him, so I'm his father-in-law. We moved to Haiti, I did too, even though I was no longer owned by his family. Fascinating. So, what's really impressive about your life is this whole rags to riches thing. You started life enslaved and ended it as a prosperous Haitian businessman. Tell us a little bit more about that. You know, I wish I could, but I'm an old man. It's hard for me to remember these things, and I don't have any records. It's always hard to extrapolate from incomplete data. And while there's mountains of journals detailing the daily lives of notable white men, everyone else's story kind of gets pushed to the side. Well, that's why we do this show. Thank you for joining us today, Abraham. No problem. Thank you for having me. Man, that's a crazy narrative about the kids and all. Now let's take a look at our sponsors. This program is brought to you in part by Groundwork Jacksonville Green Team Youth Corp. We are a group of teenagers dedicated to creating eco-friendly spaces in Jacksonville's urban core. Some of our recent projects include the construction and installment of the Sugar Hill Mosaic, the construction of the longest continuous bioswell in Jacksonville, and the creation of a herb and spice garden, a pollinator garden, and a native cut flower bed. A lot of the projects that we do are centered around the S-Line Rail Trail, part of the Emerald Trail that Groundwork Jacksonville is building. For more information, please go to www.groundworkjacksonville.org. And now for our next guest. We're live from 1805 with our man Bonifai Mr. Payton. 
Thank you for that stirring introduction, Truth. And must I say what a pleasure it is to have you here with us, Bonafide. Thank you for having me, Peyton. I must say, I've observed some of your handiwork, and I gotta tell you, it makes sense why Kingsley chose you for carpentry. Great craftsmanship there. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. To start off, I would like to know a little bit about yourself. Where did you live before Kingsley Plantation? I used to live in East Africa, in a small Tanzanian community. Then, I was forcibly transported up to North Florida with my wife and kids. That's so long from home. Do you ever get homesick? I used to, but when we did, the other slaves and I would get together and do traditional dances from our home countries. Always good for morale and tradition. Keeps the hope alive. And life on the plantation, what was that like? Well, because of my carpenter background, I basically worked alongside Carpenter Bill, doing a bunch of jobs like designing and building, you know, things of that nature. Did you know some of my original structures are still standing? Impressive. Clearly all the good things I've heard about your work weren't exaggerated. I have a quick question for you, Bonafide. Did you ever have any off time? And if so, who did you spend it with and how? I did have at least one day off, and it was usually spent with Carpenter Bill. We would head out to other plantations to try to find some higher jobs to make some quick coin, hopefully to be able to borrow freedom from Zephaniah Kingsley. Before we close out, I do have a uh, rather personal question for you. How do you feel knowing that your daughter Esther although still very much enslaved, was at the very least safe and close to you. I felt relieved. You know I got separated from most of my kids when I got sold to the Kingsleys. I'm just glad Esther was able to stay with me for as long as she did. Well, I can't tell you that I understand how you feel. I am in a way relieved to hear that the family wasn't fractured completely. You can take away a man's rights and his possessions, but the way I see it, take his family and he's lost everything. Thank you, Carpenter Bonafide. Back to you, Truth. Oh man, that's an interesting story. And now for I Did You Know segment with Miss Jabria. Take it away, Jabria. Hello, beautiful people. It's Miss Jabria. And with today's Did You Know, I will be introducing you to some inventors that you probably didn't know about. The first one we have is Gregory Augustus Morgan Sr. Uh, Gregory Augustus Morgan Sr. was an African-American inventor, businessman, and community leader. His most notable invention was a three-position traffic signal. Mr. Morgan was born on March 4, 1877, and died on July 27, 1963. Did you know that? The next inventor we have is George T. Sampson. On July 7, 1892, the clothes dryer was invented by an African-American named George T. Sampson. He was born on July 29, 1872, and passed in the 19th century. Did you know that? The last inventor we have is Lida Newman. Lida Newman was a patented African-American inventor and involved activist for women's suffrage. She is known for the inventors of the durable hairbrush. Did you know that? This is the end of the More You Know segment. I hope everyone enjoyed it and maybe you learned something new. Don't forget to follow our Facebook and Instagram page at Jack, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Hey, we're back and we're carefree in 1823. We got Esther telling us her story, interviewed by yours truly. I was born around 1823 at the White Oak Plantation, but I can't quite remember. I'm the daughter of Carpenter Bonafide and Mary, who are also owned by Zephaniah Kingsley. My family was appraised at $4,620. I can't imagine someone telling me how much I'm worth. How can you put a value on human life? I know it's difficult to imagine, but that was my whole family and most of my life. Then we were sold to John Samus' San Jose Plantation in 1848. Before I left White Oak Plantation, I married a man named Squash Lottery, a.k.a. Quash. I then bore four children, all girls. Their names were Anna, Ruth, Sally, and Antoinette. In 1860, I was purchased at a slave auction by John Pratt, who's the owner of the Bellevue Plantation and the Panhandle. This is where I spent majority of the Civil War. I heard you had a large impact on a certain person's life during this war. Yes, I did. 
Mrs. Pratt and I became very close during this time. Mrs. Pratt needed to flee, so she asked me to hide her valuables and protect her children. I hid the children and the items very well. After she acquired the items, I came up with a clever plan to return the children. The plan was to march them up to the Army's path, making it seem like they were excited to view the victorious Army and no other purpose. It was successful, and as a reward, they allowed for my return back to Jacksonville. What did you do when you returned to Jacksonville? I purchased property from the Sammy's family in the Arlington area. Arlington and Jacksonville? That's a good place to live. After Quash died, I remarried in 1882 to George Bartley. We lived as a family until 1917 when George died, leaving me a widow. By 1925, I had a lot of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. That's commendable for you to have gone through all that and still have a positive attitude. I think that is a wonderful attribute, and you are very strong. How do you think others would describe you? Some would describe me as a quaint old-time figure, known for wearing a calico dress, apron, and a spotless white bandana, leaning on a stout walking staff for balance. They know me for my keen, quick intellect and exceptional memory and I am considered one of Jacksonville's oldest citizens. Looks like we have a few calls on the line for you, Miss Esther. Go ahead, call seven. Hi, Miss Esther. This is Myra. I like how your story is so relatable. What is one thing you think we should take away from your story? Hey, Myra. One thing I think you should take away is work. I was an enslaved person, appraised. You know, someone put a set value on my life, but that did not define me. I left a legacy. I made connections. I was also a mother and a key recognizable figure within my community. So that is one takeaway or universal concept of my story. Thank you so much. I will always keep this in mind. Of course. Anytime, sweetie. That was great. Call it 13, we're ready. DJ Truth, I love your show, and this segment gave me life. But Miss Esther, you're one of the oldest Jacksonville citizens. How old are you currently? I am about... 108. Thank you again. I wish you well. You as well, sweetheart. Be sure to tune into our evening program with my main guy, Mr. Knight, for some more untaught history. This is your boy, DJ Truth, and y'all will be hearing from me again tomorrow. Tomorrow.